G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. I'm Jesse. And I'm Druzy. And today, we're giving you Just, just the, the Tips. tips. Alright Druzy, we had a good run, but sadly, after three rounds, I'm calling my retirement from footy tipping. Just the Tips has been a wild ride with you, but I am in the bottom 30 of a league of 360 people as we record this before Geelong plays Hawthorne. I imagine that's not going to change. Uh, I absolutely fucking suck at footy tipping, and uh, this has been a slow and painful demise. Jesse, I have something to tell you. I've never tipped better, and I'm moving on. I'm in the top 30 of the tipping competition, and you can suck my ass. Yep, we picked a shit year to launch Just The Tips when I'm absolutely bottling it here, and it's all on camera. But we are going to take you through who is doing well in the footy tipping competition. Like I said, we are one game short. Geelong is playing Hawthorne today. We do record this on a Monday, but I think everyone's going to tip Geelong. I think that's fair to yeah. say, so we're probably not going to see a big change in uh, who's at the top, but we're going to shout out the current winner. It's still Bridge Boy 2. Uh, he's gone back to back. He's still leading the competition, um, but I don't think he's won a round yet because this week was Benny Boy uh, 5 2 1. I think I've got really bad handwriting, um, <laughs> but uh, he's on seven with a margin of two this round. I imagine he's tipped along, so let's say it'll either, yeah, eight, eight or seven. So a very good tipping round as well. And I can't see who's leading the fantasy comp because the round hasn't finished, but I'll put it on the screen now so you can see whoever's winning that. So as you can see from the scores, I'm ranked 337th with a pat pathetic score of uh, 12 slash 13. Well, the score you see on the screen will be the updated score after the Geelong game. Uh, Drizzy, you're sitting 34th as it stands with a score of uh, nine. 19 or 18. I'll uh, take it. And Dad's Watts. And disgustingly, my dad has soared into the top 162 um, with a score of uh, 16 or 17 as well. So, um, yeah, I do have to cop it weekly from my dad in addition to all the comments I get about my bad tips every week. Um, but nonetheless, subscribe. Before we get into the video, guys, make sure you do check out the sponsors of today's video, manscaped.com, for 20% off on their elite ball grooming products. Uh, I had a good chest shave last night, Druzy. Um, I'll show you the results later, but it went down like an absolute treat. Uh, and I subscribe can enjoy the 20% off and free shipping on those products if they use the code TRUE4020, all caps, all one word. So like we do every week, we're going to go through this coming round's tips. If you want to see our analysis of the previous round, make sure you go to Drewsy's channel for the Drew Footy Show. Subscribe to that. You comment on each video, and then on the next video, we'll answer your questions. So a good way to get the community involved if you want to take part. We'll start off with the opening game of the round, Sydney versus Essendon at the SCG. Sydney absolutely battered the reigning premiers on their home deck, and Richmond are not even in a form slump at the moment. Like, mm. going into that game, uh, Richmond, you know, playing good enough footy. They beat Hawthorne, they beat Carlton, um, and just not maybe not hit top gear, but, you know... As expected. Exactly right. So nothing, no alarm bells at all. Um, it was just they came up against a raging Sydney who's got, you know, some of their best contributors every week are like 18 to 22 year olds. Mm -hmm. a ridiculous. Buddy was out, so I was like, mm, that was probably their biggest shot of an upset here, but not only did they win, they won by 45 points. And then Essendon, probably the only bigger shock of the round, yeah. torched St. Kilda, had Unreal. three big outs, Caldwell out, uh, Draper out, and uh, Dylan Shield. Sure. as well. Uh, plenty of reasons to drop that game, and they didn't. So, I have no idea what to make of Essendon. So, I guess I want to ask you, Drews, how yeah. much are you going to read into Essendon's form going into this week? I mean, they'll take confidence from that result, um, but Sydney will take a lot more confidence beating the Premiers. St Kilda are a heaping pile of dog poo. <laughs> um, so, I want to back Sydney in here to win comfortably at home, as they did against Adelaide after Adelaide beat Geelong, walk over Essendon and win by 47 points. Wow, that's a big, lofty... Uh, they don't have any scoring power. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't really know what to make of Essendon's uh, triumph. I think Drake, Jake Stringer coming back into the side and adding some scoring power um, <laughs> is actually, yeah, he's been a really big plus and the confidence they'll take into this game will be significant. However, uh, at the SCG, it's h impossible to back anyone but Sydney at the moment. Uh, yeah. um, so I'm going to say Sydney win this game by uh, 17 points. I'm thinking it'll be closer. but um, Potential yeah. for an upset. Yeah, I mean, yeah, potential for an upset. Um, 17 points. It could easily be eight goals, to be mm -hmm. honest. But yeah, um, yeah I'm going to go conservative. And Who say knows 17. this year? Yeah, it's ridiculous. The next game of the round is a juicy, tantalising matchup between potentially a grand final preview. A lot of mm -hmm. people saying these are the best two teams uh, maybe before the Bulldogs last week yeah. um, really sort of asserted themselves. But Port Adelaide's playing Richmond. Prelim rematch, these two teams met twice at Adelaide Oval last year and went one and one each. Port Adelaide really poor against a uh, West Coast Eagles side that kind of mauled them from the start. They lifted in the second half, but ultimately the game was over. Uh, blip in the radar, I tend to think. Um, and equally, Richmond had a blip in the radar, as we just mentioned, getting mauled by a young and hungry Sydney side. So two teams um, with plenty of reasons to want to bounce back. I guess, who do you think was going to come out more determined in this game? Oh, that's a big, big ask, Jesse. I reckon Port will probably be hungrier. Richmond got the upper hand in the last meeting. 
this is a very hard game to pick because Port on their day can beat Richmond. Richmond on their day can beat Port. It's how football works, mate. Before the Eagles-Port game, I remarked that our best chance of going into that game was that we had more to lose. I think that's probably mm. true. Port, if they lost in Perth, um, it's not a big deal. The Eagles losing in Perth would have been bad. If you apply that same logic here, I think Port probably have a little bit more to lose. Richmond, uh, 2-2, two and two, I think, are still probably yeah. the team to beat. Um, and also, the bookies are favouring Port at $1.73 versus $2.12, which I think is quite generous. Mm. Um, who are you thinking is going to win this game? I'll go Port. I'll, I'll say Port and nothing beyond that because I don't know which way this is going to go. Yeah. Um, always hard to tip against the Premiers. Port by 12. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with you. Port by 7 points. I think they'll bounce back. And again, it won't really be too much of a blip for Richmond. They're that good a team. Next up, we have another juicy encounter, actually. The Bulldogs are playing Brisbane over Oof. in Ballarat. Get your space boots, boys. We're going to Mars. Last week, it was Port. This week, the Bulldogs are looking like the form side of the comp, other than maybe Sydney. Um, but they're still looking very strong, winning by 128 points. I did question their scoring power famously <laughs> last week. Um, and I, I said they wouldn't win by 79. But... In my defence, a lot of teams don't win by that margin anymore because the, mm. under the old rules, the game would be too congested. If a team starts getting a run on, the other team just floods back. And, um, and with the Bulldogs side, with the forward line, it's always been a bit of a question mark. Yeah. Um, obviously, Josh Bruce bobbed up, kicked 10 goals. Fair to say, career best game. Um, and it looks like they're looking very dangerous going forward as well, which was, yeah, the, that was pretty much their only weakness I had. So, unbelievable looking mm. football team here. I, uh, I'm a believer, and it'll be interesting to see if they can carry that form forward. Brisbane, on the other hand, uh, were 0-2. Unlucky not to win at GMHBA, um, but they got their revenge somewhat this week. Zach Bailey, at least, got his sort of revenge um, by kicking the winning goal. He could have done it two weeks in a row, um, yeah. but Brisbane were just too good against the Pies. To what extent do you think Brisbane saved their season last Thursday night? Um, I think they would make the top six regardless if they won last week or, or not, but I think the fair result was had because they probably deserved a win in Geelong, but they didn't get it. So Zach Bailey kicking that goal after the siren put them probably where they deserve to be. In terms of this game, I like Brisbane. I have a, I have a feeling that Brisbane will, will get up in this game, um, being in Ballarat, not that that has much to do with it, but it's away from Marvel. It's going to be a different sort of terrain. Um, Brisbane still haven't been home for three weeks. Um, but yeah, I just like this matchup for Brisbane. Interesting. Um, I think I think they'll get the job done. Yeah, I think it was an important win for Brisbane in the sense that, like I said, the mental side of football was huge, and I think to go zero and three when you're not playing terrible football would have been very deflating. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it was an important win for Brisbane. Ballarat is a weird one. It's not the Bulldogs' true home ground. They play there like once or twice a year at best. So. Um, virtually a neutral ground. That being said, I think the form line of the Dogs is too compelling. I think they're going to win this. The forward line? 23 points. I said the form. Oh, I thought you said the forward line. Oh, the form line. No, the form, yeah. No, Bulldogs forward line. I can see it. <laughs> no, I, I think the form line is too compelling. Bulldogs by 23. Okay, yeah. I think I'm going to tip Bulldogs now, actually. I'm going to change it. Bulldogs, Bulldogs. You've talked uh, me into it. Bulldogs. I would be very, very wary of like following my tips. Yeah. Right? Next up, we've got my boys coming up against St Kilda at Marvel Stadium. Uh, at the start of the year, this would have looked like a really good sort of finals-like game, but Sydney, uh, St Kilda have been pretty poor in the opening three rounds. Got that opening win against uh, GWS, which I said at the time was a good, gritty win. But contextually, the two performances since then have been really disappointing against Melbourne. And then, inexplicably, battered by an undermanned Essendon side at Marvel in a game that they should have won comfortably, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think I tipped them to win by a fair bit. So, um very hard to read into it. Normally, teams, if they haven't started showing anything by round three, don't go on to make the finals. But I do also think the St. Kilda team is, is very, very good. So um, I don't want to write them off, but it's really hard to back them this week. The Eagles, by contrast, uh, probably got a bit more confidence uh, against Port Adelaide, batted them. I don't think Port really showed up, so don't want to blow that win out of proportion. But um, yeah, look, look very good signs, and the forward line is cranking. And I think, I think we're a fairly strong marble team as well. So do you think people might be reading too much into either form line? either St Kilda or West Coast beating Port Adelaide I'm just going to scrap exactly what you said we've pretended for so long that St Kilda are a good side they're dog shit just getting over the line against GWS getting battered by Melbourne getting battered by Essendon Jesse let's let's stop pretending that St Kilda are, are contenders alright they're stinkers West Coast are going to go to Marvel and punch them in the head and win comfortably by 43 points. St. Kilda fans already hate me. You're not really helping my case. Yeah, here. well, why do they hate us? Because they ain't us. Oh. Wrecked them. <laughs> <laughs> I like your confidence. I am not so convinced that St. Kilda is shit. I think they're underperforming, um, and Brett Ratton's a good coach. They'll, they'll lift this way. They've got to respond. But equally... I think the Eagles will be too strong. I think the Eagles will win this game by, I don't know, 26 points. I'm feeling pretty confident. 
Next up, we've got Gold Coast versus Carlton at Metricon Stadium. Gold Coast uh, lost valiantly against the Adelaide Crows at Adelaide Oval, which mm-hmm. is, um, yeah, it's hard to say at the start of the season would this be an honourable loss, but it, two sides playing pretty good footy at the moment. I was quite yeah. impressed with the skill level. Actually, I thought it was probably the second game, the second best game of the year this year, yeah. um, at a, maybe just behind the Bulldogs and uh, West Coast the week before. But, um, yeah, I think Gold Coast is still showing plenty. Mm-hmm. Probably just didn't have the legs. It looked like Adelaide had the legs. And arguably, again, the difference was Tex Walker being accurate from long range. Mm She's probably the best set shot in the game right now. So, um, Gold Coast are playing well, although one and two. Coming up against Carlton, who finally offered a response after two almost games, but they almost got the points against Collingwood and Richmond. Um, They took on your boys and battered them. And uh, ultimately, I think they were just really hungry for four points that have been, you know, they've let slip going into uh, the, this game. So, based on what we've seen so far, two teams at one and two, uh, and it's at Metricon, who are you liking more at the moment between these two? I think Carlton have had more promising results. Mm. Um, you know, taking it up to Collingwood, taking it up to Richmond, two established sides in the comp, and then battering Frio, who, you know, are a decent side on their day when they decide to be. Gold Coast showed up against West Coast, but sort of fizzled away, beat North Melbourne, and then lost in a gritty battle to Adelaide. So, if you look at the the tail of the tape, I think probably Carlton should go into this on favourites. Um, they look pretty good against Frio. Not great, but pretty pretty decent. They did the job that they had to do. And Harry Mackay popped up for seven, mm. which, you know, that'll give him a lot of confidence. That midfield worked really well. They'll set up well around every contest. Um, I see Carlton winning this one by... Hmm... 27 points. Wow, that's actually a pretty significant win. I I find these two teams hard to split on current performance. I think I've definitely seen more of Gold Coast. I put that out. We played them in round one, and then I was absolutely glued to the TV against Adelaide. So I'm impressed with them. That being said, I think Carlton do have a knack. Off the top of my head, I could be completely wrong here, but I feel like Carlton do have a knack of beating Gold Coast. Mm. Um, Probably been a better side for most of that time as well. But I do just think... Got a gut feeling Carlton they're going to be too good. I'll tip a thriller though. I'll say four points and it'll be a really good game. Next up, we've got Collingwood versus GWS at the MCG. A rematch of uh, the 2019 prelim where GWS famously shocked the football world, made the grand final and dumped Collingwood out. And Collingwood haven't really been the same side since. So this is... They actually haven't beat them since. I think they played once last year. GWS won, I'm pretty sure. Okay. So um, yeah, uh, Collingwood, uh, maybe a bit to think about of that in that regard going into this game. Uh, they are looking more promising with a better performance, um, certainly in round two when they beat Carlton, and then in round three against the Lions, I think they there was a good performance mm-hmm. in terms of what their standard at the moment is, yeah. um, and some of their guns like Brody Grundy sort of lifting as well, maybe a few passengers, um, but nonetheless, I still think uh, they're starting to get their shit together. Yeah. Contrast that with GWS, um, the arse has fallen out of that team. Um, to make matters worse as well, they've got uh, Cornelio's likely out for a while with an ankle. I'm not too sure on the status of DeBoer and Davis, but I think there's a good chance at least DeBoer misses. Not sure about Davis. But anyway, injuries are piling up to a team that's already low on confidence. Do you give GWS any chance of winning? You were saying the shit is falling out of GWS. I, I th- said the ass is falling out, didn't I? You said the ass is falling out of GWS, <laughs> and I think Cornelio, Phil Davis, and Matt DeBoer were the sphincter that was holding that shit in there. You said it's piling up, it's falling out. GWS are going to be a big pile of poo. I say this being a Dockers fan, but it doesn't matter. Um, Collingwood, we know their quality. Josh Dacos is probably my favourite player in the competition to watch at the moment. And I think Collingwood will win this game easily. And it'll be a bit of a catalyst for the next few rounds as well. I think Collingwood win this one convincingly by 37 points. Yeah, I uh, tend to agree with all that. Collingwood will win by 32 against the Greater Western Sydney Prolapses. Can't end. Next at Marvel Stadium, we've got North Melbourne taking on Adelaide at the start of this year. <laughs> we can't just keep laughing when we intro North. <laughs> <laughs> we can, though. Anyway, at the start of this year, we would have pegged this to, uh, certainly I did, the, as the bottom two. Yeah. Uh, or a good chance to be the bottom two teams um, going into this year. Uh, but, yeah, as we've seen, it's been a tale of two teams. Uh, North have been terrible this year. Clearly the worst team in the comp. And 128-point loss, I'd imagine... Is probably the biggest loss in a number of years. Uh, I didn't didn't look it up the stats, but 128 points under the old rules, like it just didn't happen that much. Yeah. Um, and the Bulldogs had their greatest ever win, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, yeah, it couldn't have got more one sided, and uh, their heads will have dropped quite a bit. Arguably, you could say maybe they'll uh, they'll have see a response this week, and they'll probably see this game as winnable. I know Adelaide are playing good footy. Mm-hmm. Adelaide haven't really shown any too many weaknesses this year so far. They've, they had a loss against Sydney, who were looking really really good, and then they've won their other two games as well. So, uh, Tex Walker's on fire. Plenty of weapons, plenty of talent, plenty of motivation. You think this team's um, pretty pretty driven and engaged right now. So, I know that North Associate, 
Mm-hmm. But I do believe they'll win games this year. No team's gone under uh, winless rather in a whole season. I don't think that will happen this year. Could this be the week? No, I don't think so. <laughs> when you come off a 128 point loss, it's very hard to go from that to a win. Like you saw when Adelaide won last year, they sort of built towards that. They were losing games, but they were playing hard in those games and sort mm. of fizzling out towards the end. When you don't show up at all, you're not going to come back the next week and win. So yeah, maybe North will pinch a result or two later in the season. It's not going to be this week. Adelaide will get the job done at Marvel. I think it'll be quite convincing again. I reckon it'll be 45. That would be, yeah, a big statement from Adelaide to go 3-1. and one. Um, I tend to agree. I, I know what you're saying. North... I do think they'll offer a response. To be honest, I, I think we'll see a better performance. Well, that's not hard, but I think we'll see. <laughs> I think we'll see an engaged team. But hey, Adelaide too good. Adelaide, you can't really um, mark them too harshly for what anything they've done this year. And I think they'll win probably by like twenty seven points. Next up, we've got Melbourne versus Geelong MCG, wow. the Caden McDonald grudge match. Uh, yes. He does hate Geelong. I he will. Um, he'll be licking his lips for this encounter because Geelong look a little bit vulnerable. Like I said, haven't played Hawthorne yet, so they could trounce him or they could lose that, and yeah. it'll, it'll probably influence the way we tip. But uh, either way, um, Geelong definitely. This is a winnable game for the D's, who are now. Undefeated after three rounds for the first time since 05. Wow. Um, we've talked about on the Drew Footy Show this week how we said uh, we, they're starting to develop a bit more maturity, it seems. It's, mm-hmm. it's previously been an inconsistent team. They started slowly last week where they maybe didn't look on their game, but either way, um, they're looking very, very strong. So this the, the odds of this game did surprise me, though. The Cats are a $1.69 favourite against $2.17, um, which I think is very generous to a side that uh, probably could and should have lost to the Lions and been 0-2 yeah. um, going into the game against Hawks today. So, can't assess how they went against Hawthorne, but um, who do you who do you think is going to win this game? This is a very, very interesting game because I think it tells the tale of the top four this season. If Melbourne are a legitimate side, they will play hard and they'll be there in the last quarter to win the game. Again, Geelong haven't looked great. They've looked quite slow. They've gone with a very um, experienced list. Like, not much of their, like the youth they're not relying on as much. My poppy's a Geelong fan. He's hating being a cat supporter at the moment, just mm. for that fact. Who do I like in this game? You'd just, on, like, history, you'd pick Geelong, I'd say. But I like I like the story of Melbourne winning here, beating the Cats, going 4-0, being at the top of the ladder or there thereabouts. I'll put in a risky tip and I'll commit to it. I'll tip Melbourne to win by 12 points. I like that logic. Uh, I think Melbourne, I could be wrong, but I feel like they, they lift themselves for this game. Geelong really battered them through that Mark Neal, Dean Bailey era. There was that game against um, uh, against them down at GMHBA where they lost by like 186 points, yeah. I think it was, um, which is yeah by far and away the biggest win in the AFL era, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. So... Um, since then, I feel like Melbourne have really lifted themselves uh, against the Cats in 2018. I remember they got close in round one, lost after the siren or close to in the second game and then yeah. beat them in the finals. Yeah. I reckon we're going to see a game where, like in that finals performance, Melbourne really come to play. I think they're going to upset the Cats here and win by 10 points. I don't think Melbourne have shown their best yet this season still. Well, mm. they didn't look great against GWS for four quarters. Against Frio, they couldn't really find their footing but found the result. And against St Kilda, slow start, but again, ran away with it. If they can hit the ground running in this game, I think they can win it. I agree that it's a real setup for the season kind of game. Mm. Uh, equally, if Geelong go 2-2, two and two, they're looking a fair bit off the pace um, early days. But yeah. Geelong don't really falter too often, particularly at the start of a season. So uh, if Melbourne go 4-0, oh, they're looking like, you know, top four is a good chance. The final game of the round is Fremantle versus Hawthorne. This is the game we've all been waiting for, <laughs> I think, frankly. Um, Fremantle load up the stadium. Um, mm. Undefeated. One from one. from one. Obviously, Fremantle coming off a really disappointing performance last yeah. week. Um, against the, the Blues didn't show up to a game that was winnable on paper, I think. Um, and Carlton were just far too good. Um, they've got some injury concerns, but probably not a great excuse for the performance. And I think as a young developing side, we're still seeing up and down games. Jekyll and Hyde, if you will. Um, and in Hawthorne, again, we have less data on them because they haven't played against Geelong today. Mm-hmm. Um, so that will also influence how I tip because if Hawthorne really take it up to the Cats, then I'm starting to think Hawthorne half decent. Yeah. But um, either way, going into this game, I think they're uh, one and one. They beat Essendon uh, with a huge comeback and then they lost got to the lost to Richmond. So again... I have a hell of a U.S. Yeah. Hawthorne based on that. I think okay. they're a young, inexperienced side um, in terms of they've got a lot of young players um, still having their first crack, so to speak. Um, again, I don't really know how to rate them. Yeah. But at Optus Stadium, uh, given I think Fremantle lift in home games mm-hmm. to some extent. What are you feeling about this? Fremantle are a team that only shows up at home. That's what I've started to realise. We don't play well away at all. We beat Hawthorne quite comfortably last year at home. 
Um, they did have a lot of injuries. They had like no one in their forward line, and now adding Brockman and O'Brien, they've got they've got identity down there now. So it's gonna be hard to pick. But Frio just do play well at home. That's what gives me their like my confidence behind Frio, and I think they're gonna contend for the eight because I can see how well they play at home in these games. So I think we will win. Um, but every time I say we will win, we don't. I'll say Dockers, we'll probably win it pretty comfortably, like 28 points, and then go lose the next week. Yeah, fair enough. I agree with all that. I will reserve the rights to change my tip based on um, based on how Hawthorne goes yeah. today, because that will influence it. Maybe they get some injuries, who knows. But if I had to bet right now, I am 0-3 on Fremantle this year. I've literally tipped incorrectly on them in the first three rounds, um, yeah. amongst a host of other teams. <laughs> but um, no, I think I think Fremantle are going to win. I think home crowd will lift them. Uh, is Fife back in? Yeah, he will be. Okay, Fife and Walters in the team. Yeah, I, th- I think Fremantle is going to win this by 23 points. Upset of the round, Jesse. Yes. What were we saying? This is a funny one where I think there's a bunch of games this round where I, I actually favoured the team that's lower on, or worse on odds. So um, it's hard to pick a single upset. Uh, a few come to mind. You're going to hate this one. Hawthorne? No. Oh. I think North are the chance. But the, the problem is, again, like I've already tipped Melbourne. I've already tipped. I mean, I, I guess you could say St Kilda beating West Coast would be an upset, but I don't think that's a big surprise. I don't yeah. really want to encounter it. I think North are a sneaky chance. And yeah. really, this, this this segment means nothing. So. Yeah. <laughs> but when it happens, it's cool. Yeah. But I'll, I'll go with Essendon. I'll go with Essendon beating yeah. Sydney just based on last week's form. Yeah, again, I, you, you can see the logic to that more than you can see North versus Adelaide. But <laughs> yeah. I really like sticking my neck out there. And fuck, it can't get any worse. <laughs> Before we go, we are going to do our multi segment. This is where Drewsy picks all his tips into a multi. So I've gone with the games that are more certain. So I've gone Sydney to beat Essendon, Western Bulldogs to beat Brisbane. That's 50 50. But anyway, West Coast to beat St Kilda. Come to beat Gold Coast, Collingwood to beat GWS, Adelaide to beat North Melbourne, and Frio to beat Hawthorne. I put two dollars on it. Oh, it, big man! And it's paying twenty nine dollars. Okay, sweet. So potentially fifty eight dollar payoff. We'll see you at Metro's Jersey Shout the Drinks. Let's go, baby. Well, that just wraps up our tips. Um, gross. We're going to. <laughs> Let us know in the comments what you thought of our tips this week. Let us know your tips for this week as well. And your ranking in the league as well. It would be nice to see uh, you know, who's engaged and who's still actually part of the, uh, the tipping league and how everyone's going. And I like to be reminded how much I suck. What are you doing? I thought you weren't going to notice. Make sure you go check out uh, the Drew Footy Show on the Drewsy channel. Like I said, check out our sponsors, manscaped.com. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Bye. Oh, there was another button. Rah.